automation versus artistic freedom is the topic for today's podcast. My name is Batul Jabot and joining me today is the only Klaus Van Gaard. Thank you very much. Possibly not the only, but the only one that I know. <laughs> and they can be the only one, yeah. <laughs> but thank you for having me. No problem. It's absolutely our pleasure, um, Klaus. And today we talk about automation versus artistic freedom, where this topic is 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 massive, isn't it? Yeah. Because you know, you, you, we're in the era of automation, but we also like to put our stamp on things, and we've got a lot of history to go back to and follow on with, with regards to um, artistic freedom and styles and things like that. First of all, let's start off with going through. What is automation? Uh, automation is actually uh, technology that uh, reduces human intervention. So it is actually uh, the, the definition, and it's it's uh, it, and of course it's it's mixed uh, reception about it because some people think yeah everything should be automated because yeah when you do automate you have uh, increased production increased uh, quality for instance. Um, but you will still have initial cost that is actually quite high for doing automation because yeah, you have to decide in advance what should happen <laughs> if this and that happened. And but so but it is um, what do you say? Two sides of the coin actually because yeah, of course you want the the freedom as well. So and I all feel all the time when I meet architects and I'm. For instance, when you're introducing Revit for them, they feel, oh, now I'm going to be strapped down. <laughs> you're going to, I cannot do what I want to do because they used to do everything manually. And then, of course, if you do things manually, you can do whatever you want to. Absolutely. So in terms of automation, then no human intervention, artistic freedom, being able to do what you want to. If you as a director, Klaus, of AV Klaus Directors, okay, and um, you would like your organization to be known for artistic flair or automation or both, which one would you which one would you choose? Would you choose to be more on the artistic side and, and your company be known for the artistic flair and all of these, you know, kind of laborious um, um, kind of boxed buildings or would you like to be known for these artistic nice kind of free flowing free form buildings mm. but I, since i'm an engineer i'm like a pretty binary guy i'm <laughs> like a right or wrong i would definitely go for the automated one even though you cannot have automation only for them of course different companies they are like uh, more or less automation, more or less design, but you cannot have it without. For instance, like Apple, they have the great design and uh, user interface, and everything looks beautiful, but they still need to have automation or production that is very lean and efficient, or else the things would be so expensive that nobody could buy it. Absolutely. So, of course, you have other companies that are more on the, like, we do cheaper products. I mean, all your prioritize uh, automation and um, not so much design but yeah yeah you need that's a perfect mixture <laughs> you need the perfect mixture but but that takes us to the question you know how can we get that perfect mixture because as you say you know some some people will be you know limited they'll think they're limited as soon as you introduce the software to them to design within the software how how do you get that fine balance how do you how do you change people's mindsets from the pencil to then come into using revit or any other platform yeah, it's like uh, you have to show them that things you should focus on automate is the, the tedious, the boring things, that stuff like nobody likes to do. For instance, a, a sort of documentation, doing all the drawings and Revit or making the drawings look the same, that's pretty boring. Nobody likes that. Uh, but design the building that everybody loves that so and yeah if you're really good at using automation at, at doing the right stuff the right uh, things then you would actually free up time for doing the interesting things and you could be a better at your job you can do better stuff 
Okay, so Klaus, in terms of automation, what is it that has driven us to kind of go down the route of automation? Were there limitations in practice? What was it that kind of said, okay, well, we need to introduce automation into our daily work? Well, it's, but it started a long, long time ago, just before even the industrialization with the invention. Actually, people, I think, well, everybody was dreaming of machines doing everything. I think that's like the, the dream that has been uh, driven people so far. And we have, so, and even to do things for safer, for instance, so instead of having manual labor driving machinery, we could end doing the steam machine or then the electric machine. And now with the computer and all the cloud stuff we're coming to, we're more and more advanced and getting more and more stuff done automatically and, and less manual labor involved. Yeah. But, but with the less manual labor involved, do you think we're putting ourselves out of work? <laughs> well, the more we introduce automation. But it's actually, uh, I was saying something that's named the paradox of automation. And that is, mm-hmm. the more complicated a system gets, the more crucial is human contribution. Oh, to fix the problem yeah. that will happen. <laughs> because things getting so advanced, so few and fewer people are aware of how to solve all the advanced stuff. True. Like, yeah, for instance, yeah. if you have on a building site, if you're using uh, manual hammer and nails and a saw, more or less everybody could contribute and do it. But if you had a robot building the house, maybe just one in a thousand would be able to program that robot because it was so That's advanced. True. Yeah. So yeah. that is what you say is the paradox of automation, actually. Yeah. Oh, I like that. But to be honest with you, I think in some industries I can already see where um, humans were replaced for, for automation, you know, in the banking industry, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, you no longer have well here in the UK a lot of branches have closed um, and you know it's it's all to do with an application on your mobile on your device etc so I think by having um, by having automation yes we've reduced down a lot the number of people who are in employment but we're now looking for a niche set of skills so you kind of put in you know people with people skills out of work but then you're bringing in the people who are technically minded who like to stay behind you know the desk programming like you say programming the robot Um, and I'm seeing more and more of that happening so it's almost like the industry has to divert and and kind of come up with new skills that you you know new skills and and redirect in the way that they've picked up or learnt anything um, to to introduce that and and to, to work within you know, the realms of, of, um, of software. Um, so with artistic flair, then do you think this is a natural thing that people have an artistic flair, or do you think that automation can actually, you know, with, with, uh, design assistance, for example, from, from software, um, design iterations, all of that, do you think that having some kind of automation can help those who don't have that artistic flair to start off with. And so the design iterations can help spark an idea and, oh yeah, I can do this now with my design. And it might be something that they've not even thought of before. Yeah, I definitely think because like if you don't can uh, see it yourself or imagine itself, but then the uh, complex system could then give you suggestions. And then you just have to mm-hmm. choose from the suggestions. That's actually what we will see with the generative design that is coming or it's here. <laughs> but that is like yeah. the computer gives up creative suggestions and we have to select the one we like or select in what direction we should progress further on or to investigate more into. It's a good way of um, looking to see how we can kind of maximize maximize that within our our design processes. So would you say then that we can still have automation within our projects without being restricted then, Klaus? Well, I would say so. And it, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> nice short answer. I would say so. 
Cool. Um, so in terms of design freedom, do you think that automation can then also help us in other areas? So, you know, the laborious tasks that we might have and, and the repetitive tasks, automation can help us redefine those tasks and reduce them down dramatically, hence saving time. Do you have any examples um, of when maybe you've seen automation reducing down those those kind of tasks that would normally take you weeks that we can now just produce in, in minutes or even hours? Yeah, I would say like everything within the, now I'm really into the, the architecture business and designing buildings and stuff like that. But I, when you see, for instance, when you are designing uh, doors in a building, for instance, the, the thing that the architect likes to do is they are designing, putting the, the correct, the good looking doors in the correct uh, size and the right place. That's the interesting things. But then yeah. when you want to uh, procure the doors or stuff like that, you, you have to know exactly how many of the different kinds you have. To, and you maybe have to do some specification for the installment or stuff like that. And all that speed, that is a terrible boring. And if people get so tired and when they sit and counting on the paper to see how many of that kind of door I have, and they will do things wrong and you will then order wrong and it will be wrong at the building side, you'll get delay. In it. But if you're using a BIM software, Rapid, for instance, then it could automatically keep on track how many of the different kinds you have. So mm -hmm. now you automate something that is both boring but it makes a lot of mistakes and it will do it in just a second because as soon as you have placed your door, the database knows you have that door. It's a continuous like line of information basically throughout your project. So you can always access um, access knowing whether or not you've got a door placed in and you know what data you've got behind it if it's been removed you also get notified of, of those kind of um, uh, tasks and things so we're removing out essentially the human error that can occur so automation can also assist you know humans um, who are within the roles of design and things like that and reduce down those errors I like that I like that twist to it um, I think having those workflows in process is, is really important. Coming up next on Optimize et al. And it's quite costly to have a smart person involved all the time. Always going to be people that have an interest in to decide what people should <laughs> do and think and say. Uh, sometimes uh, man-made is really good or sometimes uh, fabricated or automated is really good. For instance, if I want to... Yeah offer you a shrimp salad you would say probably say that a man-made would be nicer than a factory made but oh yes I definitely say okay here you can try my parachute for a job i made it myself i think you would be <laughs> definitely not i want to one made in a factory <laughs>